Bullies Grammar School in Buckinghamshire. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. What was the situation with your school? We're one of the schools that has been most badly affected um, by the by the algorithm, and it was absolutely clear to us when we received our results that the algorithm hadn't worked for us. We entered the process in good faith, like all schools. We spent time, meticulous time and energy, on putting together our data. Um, and then when we received our results, we were absolutely shocked. The set of results we received bore no resemblance to any results we have ever received. So I've had um, my colleagues working, spending hours and hours working through the night, looking at the 300 page document that we've got from Ofqual to try and put together a case for each of our individual subject cohorts. What's very clear to us is that any subject, any, any cohort with over 15, the, the centre assessed grades that we submitted have not been used at all. So the, the, model that ha, the model that has been applied is taking the rank order of our students and then applied a grade distribution model to it, which has completely distorted our results. So we, we now have managed to put together several cases which absolutely prove that we have lost all our grades. And of course, if you take a subject like maths, where we might normally get 30 A stars, but they've awarded us 10, um, we might get 40 A's, but they've moved, moved the, then A stars down into the A grades. But the whole thing moves down so that we've had students who've been awarded grade U's, which we have, we've never had in this school. A grade U is for someone who is just not engaged with their work. It's, it's morally indefensible to put students in that position. Um, I think what we're most frustrated about is there is absolutely no mechanism to appeal directly to Ofqual. There should have been at the outset a single mechanism that when schools received their data and they could see it then or no resemblance to their school's data, there should have been one avenue to quickly go to Ofqual and say, look at this, this seems to be wrong and it could be for it to be sorted. I would have preferred that to have happened before those results were put in front of our young people because they were absolutely devastated. And I, listening to those students who spoke before, they're, they're living evidence of the fact that, you know, you have medics there who have have not been able to access places when they've already proved their worth through medical entrance exams. Um, we have lots and lots of students in that position. 70 students um, woke up to not being able to access their first choice of university. And I've still got students scrabbling around trying to organise places at university. I, 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 find it, I, I find it absolutely baffling that Ofqual didn't spot that there were schools like ours, and, and there are many of them in sixth form colleges who've been given a set of results which are so much lower, but they've tried to fit their own national aim of having a set of results which didn't show sort of year-on-year year, year year inflation. They wanted a national set of stats, and therefore they've distributed the, the, right, the right grades but to the wrong people. So I've been trying to work out where have our grades gone? Where have the grades gone from those children at Sixth Form Colleges? That young man who just spoke, spoke about his medical place having lost it. Where have his A stars gone? Well, you've only got to look at some of the websites of some independent schools, where one of them this morning I was reading was celebrating how its grades were up by 40%. They quote a staggering 40% increase themselves and that their A star grades have tripled. So we talk about social mobility, we talk about uh, great, making sure that children have the opportunity on merit to make progress onto their next pathways. But what you can see is that in schools where they are able to have small cohorts and therefore the model was not applied to them or only partially applied, they have got grades which should have been gave, given to people like that young man who just spoke before us and some of my students, many of my students and students across larger sixth forms and larger sixth forms and sixth form colleges. You said that 70 of your students didn't get their first choice of university and still difficult conversations are going on. What was the response when the universities were being called up and you were saying explaining presumably and your teachers explaining exactly as you've just explained to us that students were being given news where it was not reflective at all of what they could get obviously you're speaking to a human at the other end of the line how were they reacting to that 
Well, it, it's interesting. You're not always speaking to a human at the end of the line because most of these clear, most of these processes, in order to appeal to the universities, are set up with email numbers that you can use, and it is very, very difficult to speak to a human at the other end of the line. Where we have spoken to the universities, some of them have been brilliant because they've been plunged into a position too where they absolutely don't know how to respond to this. Some of them have had some flexibility. Others have said they can't possibly they can't possibly do anything other than wait for an appeal to to come through. And some of them have just given all their places because, no doubt, some of these students, some people who who have grades who might not have grade had had grades have filled those places. And time has run out and is running out for students who've been cheated of their grades to be able to compete for those places. Um, so some universities were not able to be flexible, some were flexible, and we have still have an awful lot of students waiting to find out whether or not they've got a place. Now, the, 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 the appeals process is so incredibly protracted. Each of these individual cohort appeals is taking us about five or six hours to put together. You know, we are doing off course work here. I have got staff pouring over data to put a case together to try and understand how the algorithm hasn't worked for our students. And I've got graphs here and, and um, bell curves which will very clearly illustrate um, in each of these subjects how our data has not been used appropriately or prior attainment data has been applied which is not appropriate. The, our results do not in any way resemble any previous set of results. But there is no way of us speeding up this process. So when people talk about delay, you know, we, we trusted in the system. I didn't want um, centre assessed grades when Nicola Sturgeon spoke because we hadn't received our results and we still believed that the results that we would get and that other schools would get and that other colleges would get would be fair. Um, when we received our results, it, it, the, 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 the impact on young people has been just devastating. You know, we talk about mental health and being concerned about young people's mental health. These young people have been in lockdown for months. They, they ended their school career very abruptly, and now they are agonising over this. So the delay, the delay in the appeals process cannot be further protracted. We have to have someone with the gumption to take the action now and say, we are going to make a decision, we have to move to centre assessed grades, we have to open up additional places in those universities so that the students, like mine and like students across the country who didn't get their proper results, still get, get the opportunity to go to the universities that they qualified for this year. That needs to be addressed straight away. We cannot wait for Ofball to come up with another model or a, you know, another algorithm and run that through. You know, how much more agony do we want our students to be put through? It's anticipated there is going to be some sort of an announcement from the government later today. What would you say if you were talking directly to a member of the government right now? What do you want to hear from them? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd challenge Ofqual to look at our results and actually explain why they have gone wrong. But above all, I would like to say to them, you made a mistake. Have the courage now to stand up and say, let's move forward. Let's think about young people rather than statistics. OK, so it will mean that the overall grades this year will be inflated and we don't get the planned model that they wanted to have. But these are young people. They are individuals. They have lost their opportunities. Admit a mistake has been made. Move to centre assess grades like, the, like, like Scotland and um, Wales and make sure that our students get their grades. And please open the university places for these children children to get the courses that they deserved and qualified for. And with GCSEs, please just forget it. There is not time now for Ofqual to come up with a better model. They had their chance. It didn't work. They didn't put in a suitable appeals process. I do not want, in 24 hours, really, they would need to be in a position to be ready to have a new set of grades ready. That's not going to happen. I do not want children opening grades on Thursday morning, which are not a reflection of their ability and going through the same agony. By the same token, we do not have the time or capacity in schools to be able to deal with the same fiasco, the same protracted process. Um, we have to set up our schools for COVID-19. We have to get ready to prepare our students to make sure they catch up the time that they might have missed. Across the country, schools are desperately trying to do this, and now their time has been hijacked to work with this absolutely ridiculous 
sloppy process that was designed by Ofqual. Kay Mountfield, head at Sir William Borley's Grammar School, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, as soon as we hear any more about the timing of an announcement uh, from